My name is Chantal, I'm 25 and I'm from Italy and I've been a missionary here at the base in Wyrom, London, Yerbeki for six years, including my DTS, so quite a long time. So today I want to talk to you about uh, something that I struggle with, that we all struggle with, <laughs> breaking news in case you didn't know, um, it's performance. What do you mean we all struggle with performance? I'm trying to be so authentic. Me too, every day of my life, I want to be so authentic. The problem is that we generally are not. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? Um, think about, you know, an actor on the stage in the theater. Everyone, or most of us, have been to the theater at least once in our lives. And um, I love the theater, so excuse me, I will probably talk about it quite a lot, but um, we enjoy it. Two hours, we enjoy seeing the action and the actors performing these amazing stories for us. Um, but you know, they are performing as characters, not exactly as themselves. And when they go out of the theater, when they take away their costumes, they learn how to put away their character and live life as themselves. But the problem is that most of us live life trying to be someone else um, and we don't even know it. What do I mean? Well, in my own life, I am becoming more and more aware of the fact that I want people to love me and like me. And I'm, I'm sure all of you want that too. And it's not a bad desire. But the problem is that we try to earn their affection by performing, by being the best selves we can be. And sometimes that person is a fake person. So for example, for me, what do I do when I perform? I try to be in control of everything. Because I think if I cannot fail, if I always do things right for everyone, then they will love me and they will see that I'm essential in their lives because I do everything for them and everything turns out perfect. Which never happens, by the way, so yay. Um, but the thing is this, that person is not real. First of all, I can never be in control of all of the aspects of my life as a human. And second, you don't know me personally, but people that do know that I am the least organized person on the face of the earth. So there is no way that I can be that perfectionist and that controlling all the time without either failing or losing my mind. So performance drives us away from others instead of driving us towards other people. Why? because it's a mask. Um, performance tell, tells us that in order to be accepted and loved by people, you need to be this person that is a fake person. Now, how does that relate with the gospel? The gospel is good news. It, gospel comes from a word um, in the Greek that means good news about the king. That's the word evangelium in case you were wondering. Um, why is it good news? Well, it starts first with a bit of bad news. The gospel breaks our performance by telling us two things. One very good and one that may sound bad, but bear with me, okay? The gospel tells us that God the King in the person of Jesus Christ came to us, to earth, to humanity, to live a perfect life and to die for us. Why did he have to die? Well, the thing is, Jesus tells us that we are not good, that we're not morally good. In fact, he tells us that no one is good except God. That is referenced in Mark 10, 18. And that might sound offensive to you. It sounded offensive to me the first time I heard that. But it's good news. Do you know why? Because Jesus is telling you the truth. I am not good. 
I am not morally good. I am not by nature morally good. I'm not by nature generous. I'm not by nature selfless. All the things that God is by nature, we are not by nature. Why? Well, because there is sin in our lives. And that sin, you know, means that we are selfish, but we know we shouldn't be. That we are, we are naturally prone to hide, but we know we want connection with other people. Enters performance. Performance tells us, well, just hide your insecurities and hide the bad stuff and then sort of pretend and please other people and do all that stuff. But Jesus says, no. I didn't come to relate to someone fake. I didn't come to relate to your masks. I didn't come to relate to your performance, this character you've invented for yourselves. I came to relate to you. And by the way, he says that in the Gospels, hello Bible, he says that to Pharisees. You know, Sunday school, blah, blah, blah. We know the Pharisees were very, very religious people, but really the Pharisees were just trying very hard. They were trying so hard to obey all the laws and do everything so they could earn God's um, righteousness and holiness and love. And Jesus says, guys, stop. I want to relate to you in your brokenness. And when you admit you are poor and broken and helpless, that's when you are blessed. Why? Because then you can cling to me. You can come to me, relate to me, and I will give you rest. Why is it restful? Because finally we admit the truth. Jesus, I'm not a good person, but you are good. So be more in me. You know, we pray that prayer a lot. Um, more of you and less of me. That's very good. More of you, your goodness, your kindness in my heart, and less of me in the sense of less of this performance, less of this um, response that are out of fear and selfishness and hiding, and more of your goodness, God. The more we cling to Him, the more He'll make us more like Him. Because all the world tells you you need to be enough as you are, you need to be perfect, but you don't. Because you are not. <laughs> so don't do it. Admit you need healing. Admit you are broken. And then recognize, see that He already came for you. As you are. But also, He came to love you enough to not leave you there. That's who God is. And so, um, one last thing, I want to read from the Gospel of Luke, um, chapter 23, verse 34, which is um, Jesus was nailed on the cross and the Pharisees were mocking him. They were saying, if you are the Son of God, well, you can come down now. We're all here watching you. Come on. That's really sad. Especially because, as we said, the Pharisees were performing to reach God when God was there to reach them and they didn't recognize Him. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. A lot of times, performance will tell us that we are right, that we are good, that we are in control and that others and God are wrong and we don't need them. But the truth is Jesus, when we have that in our hearts, Jesus with his infinite love and patience says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And so I want to leave you with hope that you can admit your failures and brokenness and sin because you have a savior that loves you and he came to take that on his shoulders he died to take that away from you and to restore you into relationship with Him. Walk with Him. You know He loves you very much. And if you don't have it sorted out, it's fine. Neither do I, by the way. But, hey, that breaks performance because, you know, otherwise I could stand here and say, I've got it, but I don't. So, I want to pray, I think. Um, and then, um, I hope 
you'll discover this truth in your lives. <laughs> so yes, um, Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you because you give us the freedom to admit that we are not perfect. You give us the freedom to admit that we are poor and broken and helpless and that you alone can save us. You alone. And that you came and you died on that cross to save us from ourselves. God, I pray that you will take away all performance from us um, this week and for all our lives, that we will be honest and humble with you and that, that we will be able to love others and be loved by you the way you want us to be. Give us strength to be weak. <laughs> Give us courage to be humble and just Allow us to feel your love. Allow us to know we are loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. And I really hope that God will use this word for your lives. Um, yeah, God bless you and bye. <laughs>